Stories can start small and build over time. For nearly 100 years, history and hearsay recorded this perplexing incident of a man vanishing into thin air. In this episode of Weird World, join us as we delve into the mysterious disappearance of a man named David Lang. It was the afternoon of September the 23rd, 1880, when gentleman farmer David Lang started across the pasture next to his farmhouse to check on his horses. He had just returned to the family plantation, which was a few miles from Gallatin, Tennessee, after a business trip to Nashville. His wife Emma was observing him from a window, while his two children, Sarah 11 and George 8, played with the toys he'd brought back for them. While Lang was walking across the field, Judge August Peck came into view, driving his horse and buggy down the lane in front of the house, with his brother-in-law also on board. Judge Peck was a family friend and always brought presents for the children. Lang waved to him and changed track to return to the house to greet him. But he never reached the farmhouse. In mid-step, he completely vanished from sight. Understandably, Emma Lang, who had observed the whole event, let out a terrified scream as she, her children, the judge and her companion raced to the spot where Lang had disappeared. The five witnesses frantically searched the field for hazards or holes, but found only grass. The adults used an alarm bell to call neighbours for help, and the children were kept in the house in the care of the family cook, called Suki. A team of searchers comb the whole field and work by lantern into the night, inspecting every square foot of land and stamping their feet to discover any hidden pits or sinkholes. In the weeks to come, the county surveyor made an investigation of the land and confirmed that the land was flat and solid and the bedrock close to the surface, with no areas of potential cave in where Lang could have fallen. Emma Lang became sick with grief and was confined to her bed, while all the spook servants left the farmhouse, except for Suki. Fascinated thrill-seekers were regularly chased from the area by police. Emma and Suki declared that area of the pasture out of bounds to Sarah and George, but months after the event, they ventured there. They noticed that tall grass around the side of their father's disappearance had turned an odd yellow, within a 50-metre circle surrounding it. George told Sarah that he had noticed horses refusing to graze or walk across the area and that the circle was empty of wildlife such as mice and insects which were plentiful everywhere else. He threw a single cricket into the circle and it went silent, immediately hopping out before resuming its noisy chirping. Sarah then decided to call out to her husband and both children were astonished to hear his muffled voice calling back and begging for help, then becoming fainter until it faded away. They both ran to the house in a panic, and the mother later confessed that she had also heard Lang's disembodied voice on their frequent trips to the field, which had also become increasingly distant and faint. Emma Lang eventually left the farm and asked Judge Peck to lease it, as long as the field where Lang had disappeared was never touched. No funeral or memorial service was ever held for her husband, as Emma struggled with the loss and declining health. She eventually succumbed to her illness, and the children went to live with their grandparents in Virginia, and the farm was sold. Later on in her life, Lang's daughter Sarah turned to spiritualism to seek answers about the disappearance of her father and subsequent fragmentation of the family. She was aware that the next owner of the farm had tried to plough and cultivate the field while Lang had vanished, but the circle of weird plants had persisted in growing back. Over years, Sarah paid out a fortune consulting their most high-profile mediums, one of whom eventually passed on a message from her mother saying that she could communicate with her directly. Sarah then studied the skills of clairvoyance and learned to use a planchette to channel deceased souls via automatic writing. 
Over many years, Sarah used the planchette to regularly communicate with her mother, who she realised was also desperately trying to find David Lang. Over time, Sarah lost hope and was rarely making contact with Emma, not wanting to hear the same despairing messages. But one morning at 10am in April 1929, a mysterious force suddenly compelled her to make one last attempt. At first crazily out of control, the pencil began to inscribe in a different handwriting style, completing the message, together now and forever, after many years. God bless you. Sarah waited for more words to come, but they did not. On an impulse, she found a copy of a book her father had given her. He had written a personal tribute on a flyleaf in a style which matched the message she had just received, a match which was later verified by a handwriting expert. Sarah was ecstatic, now having the knowledge of her deceased parents spiritually reunited after 40 years of separation. Soon after, Sarah is said to have told the story to popular fiction author Stuart Palmer, who apparently signed joint affidavits with her as to its veracity. That was in 1929, but strangely, Palmer only got around to publishing the story in 1953 in paranormal magazine Fate, and with it images of Lane's book inscription and the automatic writing message. His article inspired two books by writers who presented the story as a baffling supernatural occurrence. But it was another 23 years before research historians investigated the real facts behind the accounts. They found librarians and researchers throughout Sumner County who had already scoured census records and other archives and found no evidence of the Lang family or Judge Peck ever having existed. One had even driven to the reported location of the farm and also found nothing. Another skeptic, science author Robin Chardenvold, analysed the affidavit signed by Palmer and Sarah Lang. He found they lacked a notary seat and that all handwriting and signatures were performed by the same person, Palmer. The researchers unearthed the local legend of a travelling salesman called Joe Mulholland, notorious for his fantastic stories who had lived in the area in the 1880s. School for lying is still a form of public entertainment and in those days lying contests were held where he excelled. The David Lang story may have been one of his best yarns as it was recounted in a local newspaper, the Cincinnati Enquirer. From there, it may have been spotted and adapted by horror fiction writer Ambrose Bierce. In Palmer's story, the fictitious Sarah is quoted as saying she had a visit from Bierce and that he had based some of his writings on her father's disappearance, cloaking it under the guise of fiction. Bierce had published a collection of stories in 1893 under the title, Can Such Things Be? One entitled The Difficulty in Crossing a Field, perhaps inspired by my Holland story, may have provided the idea for Palmer's elaborate hoax 60 years later. It took another quarter century to be finally debunked in December 1977 in another fate article by Schadenwald. The David Lang saga shows how a narrative can evolve and be increasingly embellished in the public imagination over time by skillful storytellers. Sadly and strangely, Ambrose Bierce was himself the subject of his own still unexplained disappearance in 1914, and intriguingly there are reports of a ghostly woman with a lantern peering through the middle second story window of what would have been the Lang property, if it had existed in that location. Locals say it is Emma still looking for her husband. <laughs>